uh, and Jeff, uh, Mike Mendez and Peter to talk about um, the project, the specific projects that were funded. So uh, this is uh, Griffin Weber. I'm just again, thank uh, Dell Technologies and also all the help David did to help us get this. Um, two projects I'm going to talk about are things we've actually been discussing within the foundation for a couple of years. And it's really exciting that we're going to finally be able to uh, make these things happen. Uh, I'm going into the reverse order that uh, Diane introduced the projects. So the first one is doing uh, query analysis of clinical and genomics data with I2D2 and Transmart. And uh, Jeff Klein, Mike Mendes, and Peter Rice are working with me on this, along with support from uh, Diane and Rudy and the foundation. So there, the project goals are to improve the interoperability between I2D2 and Transmart um, by adopting a well-documented common data model. I2B2 has traditionally been used for electronic health record and claims data, whereas uh, Transmart uh, is often used for clinical studies, uh, clinical trials, and genomics research. And by bringing these things together, we can get the best of both worlds. Um, by, there's also been many different plugins and modules and libraries being created for these platforms. By pulling all these things together, they're creating software bundles that combine all the features of these different products. It will help hospitals conduct local analysis of their COVID-19 patients and be able to share the results in an aggregate de identified form. Important to this effort is developing documentation and simplified install processes that will help hospitals use these bundles, as well as providing training materials such as online videos and uh, virtual workshops to help people use these most effectively. As we learned from the 4C effort, working with EHR data is really complicated, so you need both the software and the understanding of how to best use it to make this most effective. Over the years, our foundation has developed a large community with created many different software products. Our two core applications are I2B2, which provides a common data model application layer and APIs, and Transmart, which is a suite of data exploration, visualization, ETL tools. There have been dozens of different modules and extensions developed by different institutions around the world. For example, there are different user interfaces for creating um, various patient cohorts, a whole picture application stack provides APIs, high performance data stores, and its own very simplified user interface. And as we'll talk about later uh, through this conference, federated networks out of a uh, software program called Shrine. There are many libraries have been created by the working groups, including various ontology that you can load into I2B2, both demo data sets as well as federated networks you can plug into, and ETL processes that pull data from different data sources into a variety of databases that plug into this. The challenge though is this has all kind of blossomed over a 15 year period. It's all in different wikis and different GitHubs and repositories. And we know there's a lot of really great functionality out there, but how do you identify all of this, know when to use it, what the use cases are, and for an institution that wants to adopt it, how do you pull together the right components and be sure that they're interoperable? And that's what the that's the challenge that we're going to try to address with this project. So over the past few months, we've been working towards a common data model. We've agreed that the I2B2 1.7.12 star schema tables will be the, the core data model for our all foundation products. Uh, to remind you, in I2B2, there's a main fact table. This includes all the observations your patient, the physicians have for your patients, so the diagnoses, laboratory test results, the medications that have been ordered, uh, and so on. There's some dimension tables, a patient dimension table that has things like birth date, race, gender, visit dimension, which tells you if it's an inpatient or outpatient stay, a concept dimension that provides the hierarchical relationships between different concepts that are used, provider information and modifiers uh, for certain uh, types of concepts. Um, by having this single star schema that we can share across products, it'll allow interoperability between I2B2 Transmart and the various extensions that have been built. So what's complicated about this? We've all seen this I2B2 star schema. The difference is that in uh, other data models, such as OMA, where each of the tables are a very clear definition of what they're supposed to be used for, the fields tell you exactly what's supposed to go into it, the I2B2 star schema and the fact table are very generic. You can have different ontologies to put different kinds of data into those tables. You can extend the fields in these tables. And uh, you can use it in many different ways. 
So the exact same data model has been used differently for when an ITP2 loads in EHR data and when a transmart site loads in genomic data or clinical trial information. So because of those different ways of using the data model, things aren't always compatible, even though you're using the exact same tables and fields. So a big part of what we're doing is not only agreeing to what the tables and fields are, but developing uh, documentation that explains to users how to best use this and what can we do to make sure that all the different products that are pulling from the same database tables will be compatible. Um, so the documentation that we'll be developing over the next two or three months, a lot of it already exists. It's just consolidating and making it easy for people to find and read. And it will conclude the descriptions of the, of, of the tables and fields, along with how to use the data model for your ontology and best practice for certain use cases. For example, uh, how do you best load EHR and claims data if you're using ITB2? How do you put in surveys and visit numbers for clinical trials? Uh, there's a number of different approaches to loading genomics data in, as well as extracting data from notes and even imaging that can be loaded into ITB2. And then extending it. Even though there's a core data model that's shared between ITB2 and Transmark, both of those applications have additional tables that they use to support uh, uh, user login, authentication, and other kinds of um, uh, functionality. So what's the best way of pulling all this stuff together to, uh, to ensure interoperability? Then we'll be creating two different bundles as part of this project. The first bundle we call the Population-Wide Analysis Bundle. It provides federated queries that will allow for global COVID-19 tracking and analysis. Uh, it combines the ITB2 software with some uh, sample COVID patient data through a Cynthia data set. This is fake simulated data, but you can try it out and get an understanding of the software before you put your real hospital data in. It will include the ACT and ACT COVID ontologies, so a standard um, uh, ontology can load into ITB2 to ensure compatibility with many other sites that use this. The Shrine Federated Query Tool and the new Shrine User Interface, which will be discussed uh, quite a bit tomorrow at the conference. The, doc the documentation for this bundle will include architecture diagrams so you see how the federated component and the local query components all fit together, as well as instructions on how to map your local code into this ACT ontology. The second bundle is more focused on genomic analysis. It will provide integration with data science tools like Jupyter and R. Here we begin with ITB2 as we did before, but including components of the picture application stack as well as Transmart um, and uh, sample data that are both on the clinical side and genomic side that you can load in and integrate. The documentation here will be talking about how to import both EHR and VCF genomic data into your database as well as uh, how to uh, work with these data sets and have example workflows of doing analyses where you're combining um, with the uh, genomic and phenotype data. That's the first project. The second one I'm going to do real briefly is about creating searchable online profiles of researchers around the world studying COVID-19. There's a large group in uh, works with me in the Department of Biomedical Informatics at Harvard Medical School and Harvard Catalyst, our Clinical and Transitional Science Center. Um, there's a software my group has built called Profiles. It's been around for about a decade. It's used in several different institutions. You typically take out a uh, university's faculty, load them in, and the software automatically creates an online biosketch for those people along with various visualizations to show how people collaborate with others. You can view these on Google Maps or on timelines or different kind of cluster views. So we thought we need to be able to leverage the software to help people find collaborations uh, for coronavirus research. So, so far it's about 30,000 coronavirus and COVID articles in PubMed. Uh, half of these or so have been just in the last two or three months. They represent over 100,000 authors. Uh, what's interesting is that the older publications are mostly people who are studying coronavirus as, as their career. They're virologists who've been studying for many, many years. In the last uh, couple months, though, there are people from all over the world forming international collaborations who never worked in this area before. I have my first coronavirus publication coming out, as I said, maybe in a few days. I never thought I was ever going to be doing virus research, but here I am as an informatics person getting involved in this. But how do you find these people if you want to find a collaborator or uh, understand who are the people that are working on this? We're going to load these 100,000 authors into our profile software to create these online web pages. 
allow you to find the top researchers studying COVID-19, assemble teams, track provenance and papers like uh, um, the surgery that comes out, you know, who are these people that are writing these papers and where do they come from, and be able to discover collaborators who have data sets or resources that we need to work with. We have our initial prototype site available at covidauthors.org, though it's, uh, it's not completely functional at the moment, but that will uh, uh, be ramped up over the next couple months. Uh, thank you. Um,